Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. In the past, I created a tutorial about how to create buttons in Canvas, and I used the Canvas code to do that. And that's a good tutorial. If you haven't seen that, I would consider going back and watching that. Today, I'm going to elaborate on that tutorial, and I'm going to teach you about button transitions, different effects that you can create as your students hover over your buttons with a mouse. And let me take a moment to show you these transitions. So I have a series of buttons on this page. This first one is a hover fade. As my mouse cursor goes over it, it fades into a blue with a white text on it. And you can change that blue to whatever you want. This is just the blue of my institution's color scheme. So I chose that. Here's one that I made red. And so you can see the difference between the two. They fade from this grayish button to the color. And then the text also fades from a dark text to a white text. So you can customize those colors, create various different classes. And that's a really interesting effect. This next one is when I hover over it, then I get a border effect. And that also fades, just like the other one. The text color doesn't change, only the button gets a little bit darker and then it gets that border effect. Perhaps my favorite is this hover glow, and that creates a drop shadow. And that's a really interesting effect as well. And then this last one is a hover shadow, so it creates a drop shadow just at the bottom. And it also gives it some tint. Both of these get a little bit darker and then they get the shadows. On the rest of this page, I created some sets of buttons that all have the same effect so that I could show you what it looks like as you hover over. And then I have some boilerplate. And so this is the hover fade effect, and you can change that to whatever color you want. And then I have the border fade effect, so that just emphasizes whichever button the student is hovering over. Here's the glow effect, and this is probably my favorite effect of all these buttons. And then at the very bottom is a drop shadow. And so that's also very interesting. And the good thing about these transitions, I'm using them for buttons, but in reality, you can use them for other elements as well. So at the very bottom, I got some unsplashed models and I gave them the glow effect. So as I hover over pictures, then we can see that effect. And you could also hyperlink these so that they can be clickable. If you wanted to create different modules and you can have images for modules and they can hover over and click, that adds some interactivity. Now this effect is not going to drastically radicalize teaching and learning, and it's not going to enhance your pedagogy necessarily, but it's just an embellishment that I think is an attention to detail that your students will really appreciate. It'll make your class stand out, and it'll also show your students that you care about this material. So let's learn how to build these transitions. The very first step is going to be, you're gonna to wanna to take a moment and find that subscribe button on this channel, and you're gonna to wanna to click that, get those notifications, I have new content coming out every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And you're really not going to want to miss all this content because I've got some good stuff to share with you. So once you've hit that subscribe button, then I'll mention that you're going to want access to your institution's theme editor. And if you don't have admin rights, then you'll want to work with somebody who has access to this. What we're going to want to do is open up that theme editor and we're going to drop in some CSS code. And so if your institution already has a CSS file, then you can download that and you can add the code to it. Once you have the code added to your CSS file, then you'd go ahead and select and you'd upload that. Now let's glance through the code that I'm going to share with you. All of this code is going to be available on the supplementary website, howtocanvas.com. So click on the link in the description and you can just grab this code and put it into your own theme editor. So let's walk through the gist of what we're looking at here. So first of all, we have this class, which is a hover fade. And so this button is defined as a class, and that's the name of the class. You can define it for however you want. I just chose hover dash fade. And so some of these you probably won't want to change, but some of them you can, such as the duration, 0.3 seconds. So the time that it takes for you to go from not hovering over to hovered over. It's 0.3 seconds to make that transition. And if you wanted it to be faster or slower, then that's up to you. I think that this is a pretty good speed, though. The other thing you'll want to look at is this class when it's in a hover state, meaning the mouse is over it, then you can determine the background color. And I chose one of my institution colors. You can change that to whichever color you want. You would just put in the hex colored right here. And then the font, since it's a dark color, the background for both of these, really, I wanted the color of the text to be white. So whatever you choose, you just want to make sure that there's enough contrast. You don't want it to be that when the students hover over, then they can no longer read the text. So the red code is exactly the same as the blue code. The only thing I changed was I made that background color a kind of brick red, something maroonish. 
Everything else is the same. So if you wanted different sets of colors for your buttons, then all you do is copy this code and then you can rename it to something else. So in this case, I have hover dash fade dash red. You can have, if you want the similar nomenclature, you can say hover dash fade dash and specify whichever color scheme that you want. Maybe red one, red two, whatever you want. Let's look at this border fade. So the border fade is that the effect that when I hover over, then I get this blue border that goes around the button. And again, that's a 0.3 second transition. And here's the trick for that. I have this box shadow and I have two different colors. One's an inset of white and I have the white set to completely transparent. Otherwise I would get this white ring around here, but I need it to transition from one color to another color. It can't just be blank. Otherwise, when I hover over, I can't get that transition effect. It just appears. Here I have a white box that's transparent, which is what this last 0.0, .0 means. So it's an invisible white box and it transitions into a blue box with a four pixel border. And so if you're modifying this, I honestly wouldn't modify any of this first part. I would just change the color right here to something that fits your institution or your class, whatever color scheme you want to be using. The glow effect is super simple. Again, I have a 0.3 second transition and I have simply a shadow that's 0.6 transparent. So it's fairly transparent and it's black. And then it has an eight pixel blur. And so that's how I get that blur effect. And so with this one, honestly, I probably wouldn't change anything. Just go ahead and copy this code as it is. You maybe could play around with the transparency if you want, see what 0.7 looks like, if you like that better, or if you like it as is, then just copy and paste the code. The last one here is a shadow. Now, technically both of these are shadows. This one's a drop shadow where you see it at the very bottom of the element. So you can see the properties at the bottom on the X axis, the shadow doesn't move you know, to the left or to the right, but it does move down 10 pixels. And then it has a little bit of a spread, a little bit of a blur and a little bit of distance. And then I threw in some transparency as well. So this is the code that I have. Again, it's pretty simple. I haven't created anything too robust, but I have five different classes. One class is called hover-fade. The other class is called hover-fade-red. And that's where I distinguish the default. What I've created is a default blue versus a red color. And then I have a class called hover-border-fade. And that's where I get this one here hover-glow, which is that outward glow. And then finally hover-shadow, which would be this drop shadow right here. So these five classes, let's go ahead and take a look at the CSS. Here I have the canvas page in HTML view. And then this is the canvas page just in the regular view. So first of all, I have this button called hover fade, and you can see that it's an anchor. And then I have a class, the class I choose that it's BTN, BTN dash large, BTN, dash publish. I like the publish one and you can view the other tutorial to learn more about the different types of buttons, but I like the publish class just because it's a, a gray with a border. It has rounded corners. I think that this is just a good looking button. And then I added this other class called hover dash fade. And so that's the class that gives me this blue fade. It's a 0.3 second transition. And that's really all you have to do. I did add some margins. I wanted 25 pixels from the top and the bottom, five pixels on the left and right, just to give it a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room. And then the button will be as big as the content that you have in the button. In this case, I have class hover fade because I'm demonstrating the classes. This would of course be something related to your course, such as modules or instructor info or syllabus or a particular assignment or a link to an announcement, whatever it is. And so this is the code for that first button. The second button is exactly the same code, except for I chose the class hover-fade-red. I put in the same margin, I put in a different text within the button, and then I closed off the anchor. This third one with the border fade is class hover-border-fade. The hover glow would be class hover-glow, and then we have hover-shadow. So this first set of buttons is just showcasing all of the different options that I've created in my canvas theme editor. But realistically, you're not going to be having different effects for different buttons. You're going to group them. And so that's why I have these buttons here that are all the same class. And that's what this looks like. So I have a paragraph. 
every button is exactly the same. I just copied and pasted the code so that I had four different buttons that were the same. So I have a button, button large, button publish, and then hover dash fade. Those are my classes. I put a little bit of margin, so zero from the top and the bottom, but five pixels left and right, just to give them a little bit of space in between each other because I didn't want them running up right against each other. And so then all I did is copy this code and I pasted it three more times and so that I got four buttons. And then I put in some boilerplate text just to give me a, a little bit of space. So the next set of buttons here, this is the button. It's the class button, button large, button publish, and then button dash border dash fade. And I think that's a pretty good effect too. That's pretty interesting. Now I don't like how it spills over onto a second line, but if my screen's maximized, then I'm probably not gonna get that effect. Another thing you could do perhaps is to copy that and you could create two different lines. So if I wanted six buttons, then maybe I would have them stacked on top of each other. So three in one paragraph, three in the next paragraph. Let's just save that and see what that looks like. So here's two sets of three buttons. So I guess that looks okay. Now, as we look at these last two classes of buttons, we have the glow buttons. Those look very nice as I'm hovering over them. And so that button is just an anchor with the class button, button large, button publish, and then hover dash glow with a little bit of margin. And then you put the con put the text in the button and there you have a button. Copy that, paste it however many times you want, and then you have your set of buttons. The last group is the same, except for I have the class hover dash shadow. Now to get this effect with the pictures down here, what I did is I went into the edit and I inserted a picture and I just searched from the Unsplash repository. In this case, I searched for the word model and I pulled four different models, put them as pictures. So you can see those pictures here. They're in a paragraph. Each of them are 175 pixels tall. And then I added this class hover glow. And that's all I did. So you can see for this first image, I have the image here. I have the class, I have the margin. And then the source, that's the website for the picture. There's some alt text right here. And then I have the width and the height. And you don't have to do the width and the height in HTML if you don't want. You can just do that from the rich content editor. Click on one of these images and go image options. And then I just said, okay, I wanna make sure the height is 175. The width will automatically adjust. And then you click done. If I wanted to, I could maybe change these to hover shadow, for example. And when I save that and refresh the page, then I'll get that other effect. So instead of glowing, it's going to just have that shadow at the very bottom. It's a much more subtle effect, I would think. The glow is quite more pronounced when you're using images, but you have that option if you want. Anyway, so this is the rundown of how a little bit of code in your theme editor can give you an option of various classes that you can style your buttons. It'll make your course content a little bit more fun to interact with. And I don't want your course content to be gimmicky, but anything you can do to try and engage your students, capture their attention, or at least make their experience a little bit more enjoyable, I think those are valid endeavors and I think it'll make your course pop. So again, grab my code from the website, howtocanvas.com. If you missed that first step and you didn't subscribe to the channel, here's another opportunity for you to do that. The subscribe button is right there. Do you see it? It's right, yeah, there it is. Okay, so you just click on that and you'll be set. Feel free to reach out to me on social media at How to Canvas. If you have ideas, suggestions, if you want to show me what you've been working on, I'd love to see it. Take care and happy teaching and learning.